Hello, I'm Jeff Malone. The X is silent here with a review of the October 8th, 2011 episode of Saturday Night Live, hosted by Ben Stiller with musical guest Foster the People. And the story of this episode was how great the short sketches were and how not so great the longer sketches were. Uh, luckily, there were a lot of uh, short sketches in this episode. More than usual. Uh, all of them were great. Or if not great, at least good. At least B. I think I gave every short sketch um, a grade no lower than a B. And uh, most of them were B pluses or A minuses. So uh, let, let's uh, start off by running through the short sketches. Um, first off, we had a series of parody of uh, parodies of the Lincoln Financial Group commercials. You know, the ones where uh, it's like, are you... Yeah, I'm you, uh, about 20 years from now. But in uh, SNL's version, they got a little more uh, intimate with their future selves. Um, in the first one, Jason Sudeikis uh, makes out with his future self. And then the next one, uh, Bill Hader is disgusted by his uh, fat future self. And in the last one... Uh, ben Stiller is intrigued by his future female self. So um, I gave the first two a B, and uh, the middle one a B plus. Uh, nice solid work from uh, that uh, arm of SNL, the commercial parody arm. And then uh, we also had a digital short on this episode, and uh, I think it was right up my alley. It was uh, V-Nex. Uh, Andy Samberg and Ben Stiller's character got into a V-neck modeling war at um, a clothing store. And uh, Ben Stiller really sold this performance. Uh, he did um, sort of a vamping style of modeling that brought to mind, of course, Derek Zoolander. And also, um, I thought of the... The Heat Is On short film that appeared on an SNL episode, like in 99 or so, uh, featuring Ben Stiller. A uh, short film directed by Adam McKay, where uh, Ben Stiller claimed that he could uh, bed anyone in the club in three lines or less. And his friends challenged him to do so with... Uh, Glenn Fry, formerly of the musical group The Eagles, as played by Will Ferrell. So uh, I had, had the same sort of feel to it in my mind. Um, and just just great expressions and great swagger from uh, Ben Stiller in that one. And uh, Andy matched him uh, well enough in a goofier way to uh, make this a uh, digital short that really um, connected with me, and I, I assume connected with like-minded people who have opinions about v-necks. Um, probably play better with people who like wearing v-necks and seeing them on others. Um, those who aren't into v-necks probably weren't as huge fans of uh, this digital short as I was. I gave it an A-. Um, on to the Weekend Update segments, continuing with the, the short bits from the episode. We had, uh, Kristen Wiig with another one of her characters, one of her really strange, nervous characters. This time her name was Nan Washington, Washington, but with an M at the end. And uh, she was talking about her uh, party planning book, I believe it was. And uh, all she could manage to talk about was her one idea uh, about a pancake party. And it was, it was a sight to behold. So I gave that segment a B plus. And then we had the first appearance from... First appearance of the season from Stefan. Surprised it took them three episodes to get to uh, the 
currently the best recurring character on SNL. So you know with Stefan, it's like impossible that I could ever give uh, a segment of his less than an A-, minus, and that's what I gave him today. And then uh, Ben Stiller showed up as Derek Zoolander, which uh, made sense, you would think. Um, although it was, the flow was a bit off. Um, it, it, Zoolander, you know, they, they don't have the same shtick. So they did, they started off, Stefan talked about, uh, you know, the club at the active crime scene and the Kate Moss, who was actually a Pakistani family trying to cut in line. And then Derek Zoolander started talking about the foundation for uh, fat kids who, I, I forget what the whole th line was, but, you know, it was meant to call to mind the foundation for kids who can't read good. Uh, I forget the exact wording. Unfortunately, I haven't watched Zoolander um, recently enough to be able to quote every line verbatim. I should, I should work on that. I think people expect that of me, so sorry to disappoint. But anyway, it was just, you know, Stefan did his shtick, and then Zoolander did his. And Stefan's more practice... At the update desk, Zoolander, not quite so much. But overall, it was a Stefan segment. So, A-, minus, as I have said already. As for uh, Seth's performance on update this week, um, the Jose Reyes joke, the one where it's like uh, he was asked about appearing in the body issue, and he said, uh, oh, he's not embarrassed because uh, lots of great players have played for the Mets. So that was a, a nice... Um, turn it around joke there and that was about the only good joke I remember from uh, this update so I gave uh, Seth a B minus um, as uh, onto the rest of the short sketches we had for this episode we had another under underground records event promo this time it's the Columbus Day ass blast um, these are always great it just um, the the uh, Under Underground Records folks uh, are kindred spirits with Stefan, you know, and that they list a bunch of random things, you know, all the bands that play at Under Underground Records events are similar to, when they're listed, it's similar to when um, all the characters that are at the clubs that Stefan are promo is promoting are listed, so... Um, Crucifying Kudra was probably my favorite new band that they mentioned in uh, this bit. Uh, then uh, we had uh, another short sketch, uh, Bruce Springsteen, Just the Stories, a collection, a video collection of um, all the short anecdotes that Bruce was supposedly, Bruce as played by Ben Stiller, a, a nice solid Springsteen impression. Um, all the um, anecdotes that he supposedly tells in between his songs in concert. Uh, my favorite moment was little Stevie's attempt at trying to uh, get a story out as well, and not doing quite as well as uh, Bruce. So I gave uh, that sketch a B, and I think I forgot to mention I gave uh, Columbus Day Ass Blast a B plus. Um, wrapping up the short sketches, the last sketch of the night was Tiny Balls, a trailer for Tiny Balls, a parody of Moneyball. Uh, Moneyball is a great movie in that it's not really about baseball. It's a movie about baseball, but not really. It's about how an idea was... A new idea was brought in to a an environment that was resistant to new ideas and the players involved in the implementation of that new idea and how it uh, changed things for the better. Tiny Balls was about how a terrible idea was brought into that same environment and how it changed things for the worse. Um, so it was a very appropriate uh, and a bit satirical parody of uh, of Moneyball. So 
good job there. I particularly enjoyed uh, Ben Stiller's uh, role as the uh, the steroids provider, which reminded me of his DeWitt character that he uh, originated, I think, on the Ben Stiller show, and it's just kind of shown up in uh, movies, I think most notably in Starsky and Hutch, and probably here and there throughout his, his career. And uh, Taron Killam's uh, Brad Pitt impression was much better than his absurdly uh, awful, well, not awful, just bizarre uh, Brad Pitt impression that he did last year in a Weekend Update bit. Um, don't uh, look that impression up if you haven't seen it before unless you're a completist. Anyway, on to the uh, longer sketches, which, as I said at the beginning, weren't quite so good as the short sketches. Um, there were a couple of good ones. The opening was pretty good. The uh, Mitt Romney press conference, in which all the... Uh, Every member of the press there just wanted Romney to step aside and convince Chris Christie to run. Uh, was a I enjoyed seeing um, the press portrayed there as a bunch of uh, whiny, uh, whiny brats, I guess, who uh, weren't getting their way. So uh, when uh, Bobby Moynihan showed up as Chris Christie and dressed them down and told them to treat Mitt Romney more nicely. That was all a, uh, a good um, interpretation of what's going on with uh, the Republican primary campaign at the moment. Uh, in, and then the other, um, one other good long sketch was the uh, Fox and Friends bit. Um, which was best for its ending. It's that was all of uh, ten seconds where they had the corrections uh, scroll along the list quite quickly, um, and, and each was notable. Um, is in their in being overwhelmed with as many as possible. It worked out quite well. So. Um, no one correction stood out that greatly for me. So I gave uh, Mitt's, uh, the Mitt Romney press conference a B plus, and I gave uh, Fox and Friends a B. And I think I forgot to mention I gave uh, Tiny Balls a B plus. Uh, ben Stiller's monologue is uh, uh, some uh, an excuse for some <coughs> Jew jokes and it's. Uh, Mostly subpar jo Jew jokes at that. So that uh, got a C plus out of me. Uh, the best of both worlds the, uh, made its return for a second appearance. The uh, sketch hosted by Hugh Jackman featuring people who uh, are ass kickers, but also, uh, you know, Broadway singers and whatnot. This time around, I don't think the guests quite fit the bill. Like, uh, you know, Clint Eastwood has a sensitive side, but he's still, you know, in movies like Gran Torino, even though he sings, wrote and sang the theme song, he's still as much of a badass as he was as Dirty Harry. Um, so that, this time around, Best of Worlds just did not do it for me. Uh, the Hugh Jackman appearance as Daniel Radcliffe was wasn't awful, but uh, didn't quite get it going. So I gave this sketch a C minus. And uh, the one other long sketch remains for me to talk about. It's uh, Shauna, sexy Shauna, um, Kristen Wiig's Betty Boop s character. This time at a Halloween party, and. Each time a Shauna sketch has come on, since the every time since the second time they've done it, I just dread it from the start and hope they get over with soon. Uh, but I do laugh. I do laugh at it, um, mostly thanks to the reaction shots of the co-workers who eventually become disgusted, uh, particularly Keenan. But uh, 
these are these sketches are exactly the same each time, you know. <laughs> uh, and they've been played out from the first sketch. We know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know uh, what, what they think th they're going to get new out of it, but there are some laughs. I can't deny it. Um, so anyway, I gave it a grade right in the middle, a B-. minus. And uh, one other sketch, um, not exactly a sketch, just um, more of a time filler as uh, it was going to commercial. Um Jason Sudeikis was still in his Hank Williams Jr. get-up that he did for Fox and Friends. Um, he was just singing along with the SNL band in a bit of a riff on Are You Ready for Some Football, which basically amounted to Are You Ready for Some Commercials, which was, uh, I guess, slightly more amusing than just hearing uh, the normal sax solo that they use as they go to commercial. So, I wasn't even sure I needed to give this a grade, but um, I gave it a B minus. So, whatever that means. And uh, finally, let's get to uh, Foster the People's performances. They uh, first did their uh, hit single, their hit crossover single, the unlikeliest crossover uh, song of the year, uh, Pumped Up Kicks, about a, you know, a, a guy threatening gun violence and um they uh, had quite an interesting arrangement for uh the performance of pumped up kicks uh i wasn't even sure that it was uh mark foster foster the people's lead man singing because on um, the recorded version he sounds like this he sounds like better run better run and run my gun and on snl he sounded like Hail Ron Megan, and then the the uh, the keyboard was quacking. And I don't. Know, well, you know, was uh, gotta admire a band that likes to mix up their hits, the their recognizable songs, and make them rather unrecognizable. And it still sounded good. So I gotta give it an A minus. If I gave it. Anything less than an A minus, I'm thinking I might look back on this several months down the road and go, I was out of step there. That was a great performance, and I was too afraid to give it a high grade. I may even look back at this um, sometime in the future and decide this is an A performance, not just an A minus. But for now, um, I'm not sure it's quite as good as some of the best performances. Of on S on the SNL stage of all times. So right now, I'm comfortable giving it an A minus. Then the other song they performed was Houdini, which was a nice song, uh, and a nicely energetic song. Although uh, Mark Foster wasn't dancing around as much, he sat down at the piano for this one. And then Kenny G showed up for uh, <laughs> the sax solo at the end, which was the um, most unusual SNL guest appearance I've seen in a while. Um, perhaps the most surprising since Natasha Henstridge randomly showed up at the end of that uh, job interview sketch from when uh, Steve Buscemi hosted uh, back in 98. So that was, hey, he played the sax well enough. Uh, so I gave that performance a B plus. I uh, Overall, as I said, short sketches were great. The longer sketches, eh, there were a few good moments there. Um, and, and, and I, I, I'm a huge fan of Ben Stiller. Um, his comedic style isn't always obvious, but, uh, it works for me. Uh, he wasn't, he wasn't a huge presence on this episode. Uh, he was, he was more of a supporting player. He was happy to take a supporting role, but they were clutch supporting roles. Like, uh, in the V-Nex short... Uh, it wasn't a flashy roll. Um, well, it was, it was a subtly flashy roll. Um, it was subtle and flashy, you know, it was, it was paradoxical. Um, he, he wasn't screaming and yelling like, uh, he, he did in, you know, Meet the Parents or something, but he did have a look, like, on his face, like, hey, look at me. Um, I'm where it's at. And, uh, then, you know, in the Columbus Day Ass Blast, 
Uh, he just showed up for a minute or so as Eckhart Tolle, and you know that was just a one of many moments from the uh, Under Underground Records promo. So uh, he made the most out of um, each of his roles, and I don't know why it had taken him 13 years to host for a second time, but uh, hopefully he'll uh, be happy to come back in uh, a sooner time than that for a third hosting go-round. Next week, uh, we've got, well, less than a week at this point, we've got Anna Ferris hosting for the second time with a musical guest, a Drake, appearing for the first time. So I will see you then. In the meantime, be sure to visit the blog, jmoney.wordpress.com.